Welcome to Move Church. Thanks for joining us for this week's message. We pray this message will both move and inspire you to make a decision into an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. This relationship is where you obtain freedom and will help value your purpose and give you the power to engage your world. Now to the message. Amen. So good to see you. Welcome to week two of a series I started last week of three, uh, well, just a three-week series, but uh, on the amazing prophet, uh, the life of Elijah, and so that's the name of the series. Before I get into the message, though, um, one of the great things, I, I just want to look into the camera uh, and uh, just welcome all of those that's watching online. Can everybody here in the church put your hands together and welcome everybody <laughs> online? We love you. We miss you. Can't believe it's been a year since we've seen a lot of you, but we can't wait until we get to see you again. Welcome in, everyone. Um, one of the things I love about being the pastor of Move Church is not only what God is doing here locally, but what we get to participate in uh, that happens, whether it's in our nation or around the globe, by what we do with our missions, right? I mean, you know, and you just need to know that as you give into this church, we give out, right? And, uh, you know, people tithe into this church. Well, we tithe out. And one of the uh, rewards is, is, is different ministries that we get to sow into. Today uh, is uh, the brand new beginning of um, uh, something that we started sowing into a church down in Georgia. And all of you know Bonnie and Emmanuel Sargent that was with us for a year. They are launching today, today, right? Like right now they're in service. And um, I can't wait to be able to report to you all that God uh, is gonna do through them. And uh, we love them so much. But thank you for your generosity because we get to do things like that and help others and spread the message of Jesus. All right, who's ready for the word? Anybody ready for the word, amen? All right, if you've got your Bibles, let's dive into it. We welcome everyone, uh, and uh, let, let, let's see what God has to say for us today. Uh, let me just say something uh, that I think is so important to God, and not only I think, God tells us, like above anything else in our lives, uh, God wants our whole heart, our whole mind, like our whole, like, you know what I mean? He wants all of our hearts, our worship, our devotion, our focus, like He wants it all, right? God wants to be... Everybody say number one. He wants to be number one. Like he don't want to be number two. He's not interested in number three or four or five. Like he wants to be number one. The Bible tells us he's a jealous God, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and in fact, Jesus is speaking to, to a church in the book of Revelation. Uh, and, and he is saying that, you know, I would rather you be hot or cold. But being that you're lukewarm, I'm just going to spew you out of my mouth. Like he wants us to either be in or out, right? Like he don't want us to just be worshiping in him on Sunday, but he wants Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, us living out this life that he's called us into. In fact, the very first commandment in the Ten Commandments is God says, you shall what? Have no other gods. Like right out of the gate, he says, I want you to establish in your mind like, I don't want to be number two, I want to be number one. There will not be any other God. Jesus was asked a question, uh, what's the most important commandment of all? And Jesus said, above all else, we are to love God, how? With our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength, right? Like, God wants our heart, and which gives good reason, like, if you were the devil, like, if you were Satan, right, in, in, like, if you're the spiritual enemy of God, right? What would be the thing that you would do to hurt, to try to hurt God the most? Like if I was Satan and I'm not, don't, don't, don't get no, I'm not. All right. <laughs> Messing with you. All right. Like if I was Satan, the thing that I would want to do is to distract God's people and turn their hearts from him to other things. Are you feeling me somebody? Like if I wanted to, to, to mess with God I would mess with his people, the people that he came to this earth, robed himself, died on a cross. Like I would want to mess with his people to distract them from the attention that they give him, right? Like, which is what he, Satan has been doing 
For centuries, for hundreds and thousands of years since the beginning of mankind, for centuries, Satan has been putting false gods in the place of the one true God. It's called the sin of idolatry. I've got a key thought if you're taking notes today. If you're a note taker, let's dive into this. Uh, But point number one I want to make to you today is false gods promise what only the one true God can provide. False God's promise, can you say that with me? False God's promise, what only the one true God can provide. Like for example, money is a pretty popular God. Do you agree? Yes? It's a, it, it's a pretty popular God. It's very popular. I didn't say it was bad. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil, right? I'm, I'm not saying money's bad. We all have to have it. But what does money do? Money promises what only God can provide, right? Like money says, like if you just get enough of money, you will be happy and secure, right? That's what money, that, that's what a lot of people believe about the popular God called, the little G God called money, right? But the reality is, is once you get enough money and someone says that you have cancer and you only have 30 days to live, it doesn't matter how much money you've got in the bank, right? It doesn't matter. Like it does not, it only, it's a false promise because only God can provide what money wants you to think that it can give you, right? Like money says that if you have enough, you will be happy, but it doesn't matter how much money you've got. Like if you lose one of your children, right? There's no amount of money that can bring happiness. Only God can give what the false little G God wants you to think that it can provide for you, right? Are you, are you with me? So this is where Elijah, in Elijah's day, many people were living idolatrous lives, right? They were worshiping and serving a bunch of false gods. In fact, if you missed last week, let me just give you a quick review to give you context so that you can understand where we're going today. Elijah was called by God to go confront this evil king by the name of Ahab, right? The Bible tells us that there was 19 evil kings before Ahab. So it had been over 200 years uh, of them, the the nation of Israel living under, uh, you know, the reign of these evil kings. And the Bible says that Ahab was more evil than all all of the ones before him, right? And, And to top that, he was married to what some considered the most wicked woman on earth at that time, that her name was Jezebel, Queen Jezebel, right? And and really of all the long list of sins he committed, right? The worst thing that they both did was they continued to turn the hearts of God's people away from the one true God to all of these false gods. Are you following me, all right? And, And so the people were just no longer worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but now they've got all of these other false gods, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, and, and remember what I said earlier, false gods only promise what the one true God only can provide. Are you, are you with me? So God raises up this man by the name of Elijah, right? Elijah was sent by God to confront Ahab, this evil king. He basically says, because of your idolatry, God has come to tell, for me to tell you that until I pray and, and, and say that it can rain again, it's not going to rain or even dew is not going to fall on the land until I say so. Pretty bold declaration, right? So here it is, this major drought starts. Uh, you know, it's, it's a time of famine. Tons of people are dying. It's an agricultural driven society. Uh, and and uh, it's like major famine. It's kind of probably the worst thing that you could ever imagine. And so God sends Elijah after he gives that declaration He sends him into hiding. Why? Because Ahab and Jezebel are out to kill him. They want to take his life, right? Like they said, whatever you do, if you see him, take him out on the spot, right? And so if you were here last week, we find that God sent him into this uh, Kareth ravine, this place. If you, you know, we talked about what Kareth means. It's a place of cutting. It's a place of cutting down where God had to take some things out and deal with him, his humility uh, to make him into the man of God. God wanted him to be. Uh, he got, God sends ravens to feed him. How many thinks that would be cool? I mean, they brought him bread in the morning and meat. Bread in the evening, meat, and, 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 and you know, it's just a cool thing. There was a brook that was there that he was able to drink from. 
to find, you know, he was able to be sustained by. But then one day this brook dried up. Everybody say the brook dried up. There was no more water. And so what was happening? God was sending him to a place called Zarephath. He goes to this place where he met a widow uh, who God used to provide for him. Uh, she cooked the last meal in the barrel, uh, the last oil she used to give him because he needed something to eat when she had her own son that they were going to eat their last meal. God does a miracle. And the remaining part of the drought, what happens? We find that her meal and her oil never, like a God miraculously kept supplying and resupplying every day, right? So, so Elijah's in this miracle environment. One day the son dies, her son dies. He scoops him up, takes him up to the upper room of their house. God performs a miracle. Now, God, now God is ready, what we're going to see today, for Elijah to confront King Ahab, right, this evil king, and that's where we're going to pick up on the story today. Uh, and, uh, and now, by this time, we're about three years. I'm about to say three years. Not three days, not three months, not three weeks. Like three years, this drought has been going on. Jezebel was killing all of the Lord's prophets. There was only about a hundred of God's prophets hidden in a cave left. Uh, and uh, they were out to get Elijah. And here we find it, chapter 18, verse 17. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, is that you, you troubler of Israel? If you look at that word troubler, it means uh, it can be translated as snake or viper. Basically what he was saying is you low down scumbag of a snake, we are li living how we're having to live because of you. And Elijah said, no, you ain't going there. No, you ain't doing, no, that ain't happening. No, 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 no. I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. But you and your father's family have, you have abandoned the Lord's commands and have followed the bells. Like you're committing the sin of idolatry and you're turning people's hearts away from God and you're putting false gods ahead of God, all right? Now, I want to give you a couple of words just so that you understand what I'm talking about today, right? Maybe you know them, maybe you don't. Monotheism and polytheism, right? What is monotheism? Monotheism is the belief that there's only one God. If you're a Christian, that's what we believe. We believe that there's only one God. Polytheism, though, believes it's the belief that there's multiple gods, right? And so here we find Elijah coming into this polytheistic culture and declaring that there is only one God, Jehovah God, right? Now, now, if you're a Christian, you're monotheistic, we believe that there's only one God. What I want to talk about today, though, is even though we believe that there's one God, many of us live our lives, in, we, we live polytheistic lives. We believe, like we come to church, like we believe that there's one God, but we live our lives as though there's multiple gods. Let me tell you what I mean by that. We believe that he's God, but, and, and listen, we don't go around calling up Baal or Asherah, uh, you know, like they were doing, right? Like we've got more socially acceptable gods that we call, you know, that, that we refer to. I've already mentioned one. A lot of people look to the false god of money right? That money is going to provide the answer for them. A lot of people worship the false God of material possessions. Like, I just got to have more. Just give me more. Like, I, I'm not satisfied with what I've got now. I just need more. A lot of people worship the false God of image. Like, I just, I love my body. Like, I just got to, I'm, I'm in love with myself, right? A lot of people are in the love with the false God of sports, right? Like, they, they love sports. Now, listen, there is one false God little G God in sports that, that just should not even be mentioned. And I don't even have to go there. It starts with a C and ends with S and it's in Texas. All right. Cowboys. Like that is the false God of all of them. All right. I'm just say it. All right. <laughs> come on. Uh, come. A lot of people like, like they focus on their God is their career, their, their education. Right. And oddly enough, like sometimes it can even be our children. Mark, what do you mean? Like you, you say in my, my children, I can make my children. Listen, anything you put in place of where God, like anything you put on the throne of your life that is not God first. Are you hearing me, somebody? Listen, I'll give you, I, I, you know, I've got a few in my life. Like this church 
has been a God to me at times in my life. Like I've, I've put this church number one, even before, like I do it in the name of God, but I get so wrapped up in the, 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 the consumption. God, what are you going to do? Like, like we got to grow more. Like we got to reach more people. Like we're, you know, we, we need to do greater things. Are you feeling me? Sometimes here's another little God of mine is my family, right? There's been times in my life that I've allowed my family to become that little God, like elevate it above. Like there's times that we think, oh my God, man, I'm, man, you 52 years old, dude. You better be thinking about 15 years later. You know what I mean? You got a retirement coming. Like, what are you going to do? And you can put that, that has consumed me at times. Are you feeling me somebody? So my question to you today is I'd like to ask, what are some of the false gods that you've elevated or erected in your life in the place of the one true God? Right? Sure, you're monotheistic, you believe in God, right? But our practices sometimes are polytheistic. And that's where we find Elijah. He's coming into this environment and he makes a prophetic, strong statement. And if you're taking notes, I could probably summarize this story in this one message of what I'm getting ready to say. He comes before the people and he says, It's time that you stop wavering. Like, you got to quit wavering. You got to make a decision. You got to make up. Like, are you going to live for God or are you going to live for the other little G -G gods out in the world? Are you following me, somebody? Like, it's time. You got to quit wavering. You got to make up your mind. I'm going to go all in or I'm just going to pull back, right? And what he does next is like, it's really amazing. I want to read it to you. Verse 19, he goes to the king and he says, now summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 and prophets of of Asherah who eat uh, at Jezebel's table. I just got to pause. Like that would be a big honking table. I mean, that's a big table. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, so (laughs) So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal is God, what? Follow him. But the people said, what? Nothing. So he steps on the scene and he says, like, if God is God, let him be God. But if Baal is God, just why don't you go and follow him? And listen, I can guarantee you if Elijah was living in 2021 on this Sunday, if he was able to speak to us today, he would stand before this congregation at Move Church and he would declare, it's time for you to stop wavering in your faith. It's time for you to pick sides. Which side are you going to be on? Are you going to worship God or on Sunday and then act like a heathen the rest of the week? Or are you going to make up in your mind, oh boy. I love you. I'm just talking. All right. Don't, don't look mean at me today. I'm just talking. Like you got to make up your mind, take a side, right? In, In fact, I'm trying to conceptualize Elijah's message today. And here's what I think you would say. Like if your faults, God, little G God, whatever it is, like if it's really God, then don't just give into it a little bit, like just sell out to it. Like, like if your little G God is material possessions, like, hey, just stop trying to accumulate just one a year or one a, every six months. Like, why don't you just go into massive debt and just accumulate as much as you can this year if it's your, like, if it's going to give you what you think it's going to, that's, that's what Elijah would say. Like, if, if your image is your God, like, don't just kind of do it, like, don't go to the gym one hour a day. Just go hang out there all the time. To which some of you would say, praise God, thank you for telling me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thank you for giving me permission, right? Like, like if, if your image, like, like just whatever you got to do, go tan it, go tweak it, go lift it, go twist it, go curl it, go color it, go funk it, go, <laughs> go puff it up, like whatever. Forget about the fact that you're going to die one day. You know what I mean? Just don't even worry about that. Just go buy as many nice clothes as you, to make you feel good. If, if, if your God is your, are you following me? I think Elijah would come and say, like, listen, if your little G God is sexual pleasure, like, if that's your God, like, go do it. 
Like, don't let a little thing called marriage interfere and stop you from just, 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 just go do it. Like, I'm trying. If, if, if Elijah was here, like, and if you're not married, just be promiscuous. Just do whatever. Like, if you are married, go ahead. Just do it. Just dive in. Like, and what I'm trying, like, stop trying to play. Like, don't play both sides of the street, right? Like, if your house is, is your little God, man, just don't remodel one room. Go get a home equity line and go into debt. Do the house and the yard. Redo the driveway. Just go, go all in. If that's what going to give you, like, just ignore everything else. Just go all in. But if, everybody say, but if. I think Elijah would say, but if Christ is your Lord, don't just give him a little bit. Don't just go halfway, but jump all in and just go and give him your heart, your soul, your mind. Like, don't worship. Listen, I don't, don't just go to the football games, which we can't even go to them right now, but, but don't go. I've been to them and I know how people are crazy and go nuts right, for their team. Listen, I have made up my mind that I am not. I refuse to let a pigskin get more praise than my God. I refuse to let some guy on a field catching and throwing a football that will never know my name and never remember me when I'm hurt or sick or whatever, my family, like I refuse to give them any more praise than I'm going to give the God. When I come on Sunday, that's why I got one mind, I got one accord, like I'm, I want God to know that he's number one in my life. Are you feeling me? Come on. Sometimes we get distracted by these little gods. And Elijah would come and say, like, I can just feel the power of Elijah looking directly at Mark saying, don't get distracted. Amen. Don't get distracted by these little gods. Mark, stop wavering. And I believe he's come to tell somebody here in this service today, stop wavering between two opinions. Stop trying to figure him out. Like, just dive in. Go a whole in. So what did he do? He basically had an old-fashioned showdown. I want to read it to you. Verse 22 and 18. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left. But Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves and, then, and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set it to fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of my God. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Then all the people said, what you say. Now the people speak up and say, oh man, that's pretty good. Go ahead, let's do that. Verse 25, Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the bulls, prepare it first. Since there are so many of you, call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire, right? So the, they, they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning, everybody say morning, morning. till noon. Baal, please answer us. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar that they had made. Like, I'm not even going to try to model the dance, you know what I mean? Because I don't want to, you know what I mean? But they danced, and they were dancing, right? And they were shouting, Baal, please answer us, right? At noon, Elijah, now look at here. This is my kind of dude, right? Elijah began to taunt them. Come on. Bell and Elijah comes, shout a little louder, call a little louder, right? Surely he is God, right? Perhaps he is in deep thought, or he's busy, or maybe he's on vacation. Maybe he's sleeping, and you need to awaken him up, right? 
So they shouted the louder, began to cut themselves with swords and spears as with, was their custom until their blood flowed. Midday passed and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. Everybody say no response. No one answered. Say no one answered. No one paid attention. Right? And sadly, they danced for, for a little part of a day. But sadly, a lot of times, a lot of people on planet Earth, we will dance and shout for a lifetime for these little gods thinking that they're going to bring us the happiness and the peace and the security, which they only can make a false promise because only God can provide what you need in the time of trouble in your life. Only God can bring what you need. Listen to me. Then Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. They came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. And Elijah goes in to tell them, this is what I want you to do. I want you, I'm going to bring the sacrifice, but I, I want you to dig a, a, a trench around the altar. And then he says, now I want you to get a jar of, of, uh, you know, of water and I want you to fill, I want you to pour it in the trench, Right? Like he's just taunting them. You prayed all morning and your God didn't answer. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. Here's the sacrifice. Dig a trench. Pour one jar of water. Here, come do another one. No, no, come do one more. He said, do it three times. He filled the trench up with water. And then the Bible says at that time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed. Everybody say prayed. He didn't dance, he didn't cut himself, but he prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so that these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. I think, can you hear the power and the, and the beauty of what this statement, like, oh God, Answer me, reveal yourself in the power of your might to your people. They've got questions. They've been stirred in the wrong direction. They've been believing in false gods. And I believe with all of my heart that there's people inside this room right now that you've, been uh, you've opened yourself up. Like you believe, you've been trying to figure God out. You've been trying to understand God. And you've been wavering. And God is called. He's brought you here for Pastor Mark to talk to you about Elijah. For me to say from the voice of Elijah, it's time to stop wavering. It's time for you to stand up and believe that God is able to do and be the God that you need him to be in your life. Praise God. Amen. As I read this, I, like, I, I felt like there, there was a part of me like, that, that you want to just understand. Like I feel the passion for you, for God wanting to come and tell you today that I am like don't listen to the false gods. I am the one true God. God's trying to reveal himself to you today. I got to hurry along. I'm going to close with this, right? I, I remember as a, I, we all know fire, right? Kids, if you're here, don't listen to Pastor Mark right now, all right? Don't, 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 don't do what Pastor Mark did. I remember playing with fire. I remember one Sunday afternoon, my dad, we lived next door to the church. He was a pastor. He was preparing for Sunday night service. Me, I had a friend stay over. We got a box of matches. We went into the back of the church, the woods behind the church. I just lit a match. We had some pine needles that we, we, we thought that we had protected it right. We just wanted to see what it would do. We knew what it would do, but we just wanted to be stupid. You know what I mean? Like, it was like we had taken a can of gas. And poured it, like I guess the wind built up or whatever. But it went so fast and so quick, like one way was going toward the church, 
Another way was going toward our neighbor's cow pasture. And all I knew is to go, daddy, daddy, daddy. You know what I mean? And how many knows that daddy, 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 once the fire department got the fire out. You know what I mean? <laughs> that I never did that again. And I'll tell you later privately what he did to me to make sure that I didn't do it again. You know what I mean? It's child abuse today. I'll just tell you now, it's child abuse. You know what I mean? It's child abuse. <laughs> right? I know what fire does. Last year, we had a, a, I had a brush fire that we had just been collecting in our back of our yard, and we decided, man, today is going to be the day. It was so dry that I lit a fire, a little match, and as soon as I lit it, before I knew it, like, I got, I got, I got burns, you can see it today. Neighbors were with water hoses, I felt like an idiot, you know what I mean? The Bible says, verse 38, Elijah prayed, then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. Come on, imagine. Whoosh. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate on the ground and cried, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. My prayer for somebody here as we prepare to close today, my prayer for you today is that all the other false gods would fall to the wayside and that there would somebody be able to stand up and acknowledge with me today that hey, it may not have happened the way that I thought it should happen. God may not have came through when I thought he should come through, but God is an on time God and he's always able to do exceedingly abundantly above more. Like I'm praying, my heart today came to this church that God would reveal himself to somebody today just as that hearts would be turned back to God. Are you feeling me, somebody? Come on, that somebody would recognize that God is your Jehovah Jireh, that he is your provider, that he is your healer, that he is your salvation, that he is your deliverer, that he is your helper, that he is your friend, that he is the one that is able to send fire from heaven and consume, that the Holy Spirit is able to fall with a consuming fire and burn up everything inside of our heart that we can become and recognize and acknowledge. God, I believe in you. Is there somebody as you bow your heads today? I wonder if there's somebody in the house that has come today. Maybe you've got questions. Maybe you've got, you're trying to figure him out. I'm here to tell you today. Elijah would stand on this stage and he would come and he would declare, stop wavering between two opinions. Stop wavering. Stop being confused. Stand up to your feet and begin like to stand up and acknowledge that I am Jehovah, your God. I am the one that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think or imagine like I am he stop wavering listen guys what some of us need to do is we need to just stop trying to figure him out and we just need to dive in and say God whatever you've got for me I'm ready to go all in for you I ain't gonna try to figure it out every head bowed every eye closed I just wonder if there's if there's someone here today Come on, no one's looking, the lights are dim, no one's looking around. I just wonder if there's somebody that's got a sacrifice that you want to offer up to God today.
you feel like lifting your hands, we're going to close and sing in this song. But if you feel like lifting your hands, lift your hands. If you feel like singing out loud, sing out loud. If you feel like kneeling on your knees, get on your knees. This altar will be open for you to come and pray. We've got prayer team members that would love to pray with you. Here's my prayer that you would just bring us, like whatever it is. I don't know your story. I don't know your life. I don't know what you need. I don't know what you're in need of like right now, but here's what I do know. That my God, He is the God that can provide the fire and He will consume the sacrifice. So could we just lift our hands up right now? If you feel comfortable, if you don't have to, come on, let's sing this song right now unto the Lord. Come on, and let's just worship Him from the depth of our soul. Let's do it right now.